Good afternoon, this is Rosalind Kahn with Chow Entertainment, Living Your Best Life. Today we have a special guest with us, a personal injury lawyer. His name is Vlad Genshu. Vlad, so tell me, where were you born? So I was born in 1986 in Romania. It was a communist country at the time. And uh, communism fell in 1989. So I had the opportunity with my mom. We came to the United States in 1991. Uh, coming up on the anniversary, it was December 11th, 1991. My mom came on the 3rd of January, 1991. She went to go study at the University of Pittsburgh in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And I came on December 11th with my grandmother. Uh, and we moved, uh, we lived in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania from uh, 91 to 96, when my mom got her uh, degree in chemical engineering. And after that, we lived in West Virginia. She worked for Union Carbide. And then we uh, we moved and lived in Eastern Pennsylvania, and I uh, after that I went to college in okay. Washington D.C. So what did you study in college? I studied international politics at Georgetown University. Uh, great program there. I interned for the U.S. Senate, uh, Senator Arlen Specter. He was chairman of the Judiciary Committee. My my highlight of that was I gave tours of the U.S. Capitol. I was 18 at the time. I gave my mom a tour. Gave tours to uh, constituents from Pennsylvania. I can say that I opened the door for Senator Specter. I saw him a couple times. He's a great, he was a great American, served in the Senate for 30 years, just a, one of the best senators I think Pennsylvania ever had. What's the best lesson that you learned from, from him? Uh, well, it's probably uh, one of the things that I know about his office. Uh, he's, he was there for 30 years. It was a white collar uh, boot camp, if you will. He was very tough on his staff. And that's one of the things that I learned, generally speaking, in law. Uh, law, in, in a sense, is. Uh, to a certain extent, it's like uh, like the military. The more you put in, the more you get out, especially in uh, trial advocacy. Uh, if you're willing to put everything in, and sometimes your family's gonna suffer in terms of time commitments, you're gonna get a lot out. Senator Specter, who's a lawyer, he went to Yale Law School, he was on the uh, Warren Commission, I think he may have been 32 years old or something mm -hmm. like that. He devoted his life to Pennsylvania and practicing law. He has a, has a son, Shane Inspector, a great medical malpractice attorney out in Philadelphia. At the end of the day, uh, if you're willing to give it your all, uh, to quote Lyndon Johnson, if you're willing to do everything, you're probably going to end up winning. So he, he basically, uh, he expected everything from his staff. And there's reasons why he won elections uh, that most, a lot of people thought he wasn't going to win. He won in 1992. He pulled it out in 2004 in the Republican primary. If you're going to give it everything in whatever field you're in, whether it's interviewing people in the media, practicing law and medicine, you're probably going to get what you want out of it. And that's often going to help your clients or your patients or your, your constituents. Fantastic. Well, well, that takes me to my next question. How long have you actually been practicing law for? Well, today is my ninth anniversary, my nine-year anniversary. I was licensed on December 4th, 2013. I was graduated from Loyola Law School here in Los Angeles. I was admitted to the bar on December, December 4th, 2013. So it's been nine years and nine and counting. Wow, now how was it that you decided to, to practice cases? Great question. So the, the vast majority of my practice is personal injury litigation and trials. Uh, when you think of personal injury lawyers, oftentimes you, uh, you think of billboard lawyers. And that's not a knock on those lawyers. You know, they, they, do, they do do a service. And a lot of those cases settle very quickly. There's a lot of cases that shouldn't go into litigation and they shouldn't go to trial. I don't do those kind of cases. So for me, uh, I'm more good on my feet than in the seat, meaning I'm, I'm better at taking depositions, defending depositions, prepare, preparing clients for hearings, uh, preparing for trial. Not really, I can write, obviously I can research and write, but I'm, that's not really the thing that I, uh, that I focus on. What I focus on is getting the case, preparing it for trial, getting, doing the legwork in between and then trying the case. I got a trial that's coming up on December 14th of this year. I've tried with that case, it'll be five cases this year. Uh, I started my first one this year in February, 2022, right out of the bat when, once uh, COVID ended, basically for our superior courts here, and especially here in Los Angeles County, we had quite a shutdown. I've tried uh, in total, I will have tried uh, seven jury trials, seven civil jury trials six of which went to verdict. The, the one that didn't, it settled for a $3 million. It was a quadriplegic, mm -hmm. a traumatic brain injury case. You might say, well, that's quite low, $3 million. There was no liability on it. We had one a juror who was going to vote for us. We are probably going to get defensed if we didn't settle it. And we settled it right before uh, the jury was going to go out and deliberate. So we kind of landed the plan in the right, the right way on that one. 
Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for your interest in Biz Ab Jets USA magazine. We are a quarterly publication for anybody interested in business jets, whether it's for personal use or the use of business to transport goods, services, and employees. This quarter, we proudly feature Kevin K2 La Rosa, the brains behind Top Gun Maverick, a very popular film. Visit us at bizavjetsusa.com or pick up a print copy at your local airport. Thank you. Phenomenal. Now, it sounds like you got a great track record. What, what does it take to get a great track record in, in winning those cases? How do you get the best results? Well, there, there's there's a book out there, and I, I have it written down uh, right there. It's called Trial by Human. It's by Nick Rowley. You know, I, I think I think everybody in, in any field that they're in, whether it's you know, whether it's law, whether it's medicine, entertainment, business, politics, they have like a guy they look up to. For me, it's a guy by the name of Nick, Nick Rowley, Nicholas Charles Rowley. He's a great lawyer. You know, he served in the military at you know 17, was a lawyer at 22. That's extremely rare. Tried about 163 jury trials. Um, I know the interview's about me, not about him. But to me, I think it comes down to this. If you're willing to give it your all, and you're willing to put everything out on the line there, and you're willing to meet the client, do trial by human, meet the client, go, you know, meet the client in their home, have dinner with them. Don't just, you know, they're not just a file number. I used to work for an insurance company, great insurance company, but it's a you know, all state insurance company. The issue that I often see in personal injury is a lot of personal injury lawyers let the insurance company run the case, right? It's kind of like if you're playing a sport, basketball, mm -hmm. football, right. whatever. When you're on the offense, you're supposed to move the ball forward. That's what the plaintiff lawyer is supposed to do. They got to prove the case. A lot of these plaintiff's lawyers, billboard lawyers, I'm sorry to say, they take a case they move it forward maybe by filing a claim, maybe by filing a lawsuit, and they just stop, right? It's still like second and 10, and then they just fumble the ball. Trial by human, lawyers like Nick Rowley, somebody who I seek to emulate, says, look, you gotta look at the human story, right? You gotta go meet the client. You gotta see how were they injured? What happened to them? How did it impact their life, right? A human being isn't just a car, a little bit of property damage, some medical bills. See if it impacted, you know, when I, when I meet my clients before deposition, I spend a lot of time with them. And I go meet them in their home. I meet with them with their family. Sometimes I might not speak the language, but somebody in the family does, and they, and they interpret it. And I ask them, listen, I get you had your medical bills. I get you had your treatment. Tell me, how has this impact your life? Or not? How has it? And, and usually here, I, I had this, uh, these clients, the Carrera family. You know, we, we had a trial. You take a look at the photos there, the, the, of the property damage. It settled for uh, right before trial for way more than we thought it was going to be. But I met them numerous times beginning in January 2021 all the way up until May 2022. And I said, listen, how did it impact you? And you know how it impacted them? The grandmother, there's three kids. There's two kids in the car, a grandmother and the mom and the dad. She couldn't cook for the kids. She couldn't, she, she couldn't cook for the kids. She was used to doing that. She was used to, you know. I'm a father of two. You, you pick up the kids, you move them around. The dad and the mom couldn't do that. That's the human element that sometimes is often is missing when an insurance company evaluates a case. And if you're not going to get that out because you never met your client, because they're just you know some medical bills and some property damage, you're going to miss that opportunity at trial. And if you miss that opportunity at trial, you're going to get a bad verdict. And the way you get a good verdict is you know your clients on a first name basis. I give my clients, all my clients, I give them my cell phone, right? And the reason for that is they pick up the phone, they call me, they have my number. Because I need to know where they are. And I, and if they, if they need to meet me, I'll be there for them. You gotta know their human story. So that brings me to the next question here. Is, is the type of work you do, is law an art or is it a science? I think it's a little bit of both. I think it's a little bit of both. We often hear that about medicine. It's, it's more of an art and a science. I think it's a little bit of both. I think when you're trying a case, the most important part is jury selection. And I think if you do it by trying it trial by human, you gotta, sometimes the lawyer has to pull, uh, pull back and realize that you got 12 people in there, right, on a, on a jury. Maybe you got two or three alternates, depending how long the trial is, because some of those 12 might leave. You need nine out of 12 
right, on every single vote, right, negligence, substantial factor, how much money is going to be awarded in compensation, if any. And you got to realize that the art is how each case is different, right? Is this a slip and fall? Is it a trip and fall? Is it a dog bite? Is it a car wreck? Is it a products liability case? But the science of it is, at the end of the day, for every case, it's not jury selection, it's jury deselection. You got to figure out, and we're living in a society where from about 1990 to present, the insurance industry has very effectively demonized personal injury claimants and their lawyers, right? Shysters, ambulance chasers, don't feed the lawyers. I lived in West Virginia, I saw it in West Virginia, I saw it in Pennsylvania, it's very effective, right? So you gotta, you gotta, you gotta figure out your tort reformers on the panel, on the jury, and that's, that is what I think is more of the science. There's ways to figure that out. There's questions where, where you figure it out. There's ways to get, I know we're getting really in the weeds here, but there's ways you're gonna get what's known as for cause challenges, where you can get an unlimited of those, where basically the minute that juror walked on, they're so biased because of their life experiences, you're never gonna get a fair verdict. You gotta figure those guys out. You gotta figure who those people are. Because if you don't, remember on the defense side, they only have to get four, right, to get a mistrial. Because they got all the money in the world, right? They can keep on trying it until you're in bankruptcy court. So you have to figure out your tort reformers. You have to figure out the people on that panel who fundamentally are not going to look at the case fairly. And that's where the science comes in. The science comes in, there's questions to make sure you're going to trigger those biases so that the judge basically says, look, you didn't even hear any of the evidence in jury selection. You're, you got it. You're going home. Thank you for your service. We'll call you next year. And that's really something that I learned through experience. Awesome. How is it that people can follow you? So uh, I got a, I, I'm, I'm only 36 years old, so I'm not really a great grandpa here, but when it comes to social media, I kind of think I am. I'm not really that good at it. Uh, I do have a website, uh, genchulaw.com, spelled G-H-E-N-C-I-U-L-A-W.com. Uh, you can look me up on this thing called Super Lawyers. It's uh, basically other lawyers that vote for lawyers to see how, frankly, for whether they're recognized or not in their community. Here it would be Southern California, and I'm listed on that. Uh, just Google Super Lawyers and type my name in. I'm a rising star. I've been in 2021 and 2022 and most likely 2023. Uh, I do have a Twitter, I guess it's called a handle. It's just Vlad Genshu. Uh, it's the guy that looks like a lawyer, uh, like you're seeing right here, and it's got a constitution uh, behind me. And uh, I do have Instagram. Uh, it's uh, Vlad Genshu. So, but you could, look, if you have a case you want to call me, I'll give you my cell phone. 213-435-1669. I look forward to hearing from you. Happy holidays. Again, welcome to the Oakland Aviation Museum. This is a special museum for aircraft, historic GA, general aviation, and World War II airplanes here at the Oakland Airport. As you can see, it's now open seven days a week for the summer. And I wanted to show you around. This is an indoor and outdoor museum. This is the outdoor area. Over there, we have a flying boat. There's not too many of those left. Here you can see the Douglas KA-3B Sky Warrior. Really cool. Lots of red and blue. You can read up on it. Some start or had their first flight in this plane. Now we use more Cessnas. Come over here. And this is just a great place to come and visit to bring your family. As you can see, the ground is like a little runway. Like the Kitty Hawk corporate. And of course, that's the Wright Brothers. That's the Wright Brothers. And this is the gift shop where you can get all of your favorite aviation goods. Thank you, and we hope to see you soon. Thanks, Rosalind. Uh, we have known each other for a long time. Thanks for coming. It's a pleasure uh, seeing you again. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm the founder of this uh, Global Peace Through Global Trade organization, started in 2006. And uh, by profession, I'm an engineer. And 
at a very young age i had the opportunity to build one of the best ports of asia so i gained a lot of experience in icb contracts international contracts nation building because uh, i believe engineers build nations and that's why we see a country like china where uh, out of the five presidents i think all of them are engineers and the present uh, president xi jinping's wife is also an engineer so engineers build nations and i hope one day comes that america is also going to have more engineers in politics than attorneys india and america has something in common as a democratic nation 80% of the politicians are attorneys and china has 80% of the politicians in china are engineers and that is why china is an example which has grown so fast in the last 40 years because of engineers background so ladies and gentlemen the reason this platform was started was primarily that america as a nation with the fiduciary responsibility for the leaders of this nation have only built four nations in the last 75 maybe 80 years after world war 2 and those four nations don't even speak english unfortunately they left behind 196 countries to be developed still and those four nations are japan number 1 germany number 2 korea which is called south korea china dubai all these five nations that i talked about don't speak the language english and i don't know why with what political interest that america is not taking care of 195 countries there are 24 nations in uh, latin america there are 54 nations in africa there are 48 nations in asia caribbean is another 12 nations so all these nations are still pending to be developed and the best way to develop it is in the city of angels because between san diego and santa barbara the top industries of most of the uh like in san diego you have qualcom telecom giant you come down further biotech giants go come down further oil and gas chevron arco go down further hollywood in 40 square miles the total media and entertainment industry worldwide is 3 trillion dollars almost 2.9 trillion dollar is just restricted within 40 square miles that which makes california the fifth largest economy in the world and that is the reason we would like everybody to come to los angeles because 200 nations are right here the leaderships of 200 nations as latin american as uh, african american indo american south asian americans these are the brains the best brains of those nations and those br- best brains of the nations are passionate about seeing their own nation develop that is the only passion i see with every american immigrant in this nation who have come today who have come 100 years ago who has come 200 years ago as a country of immigrants this country everybody is only passionate about building their own nation but they don't have a platform they don't have the experience and that is the expertise that this us global business forum as a global platform helps them i get very disappointed when i see in india that the under secretary of trade commercial service many years ago under president bush's regime he comes to india with a trade delegation of only 20 members a country that has 10 trillion dollars to offer to america 10 trillion dollar business under secretary levin comes with 20 people not even the ceo level and i asked him i asked him do you think india has only a vice president of johnson group or some group or construction group and you are leading a trade delegation with 20 members 20 companies so these are the kind of things that 
like John Kennedy, President John Kennedy rightly said, what can you do for your country? What can you offer to your nation? This is the platform. As Americans, we would like to bring business to America, from Latin America, from Africa, from Asia, from European Union. There is no governor that takes a trade delegation to India, but they will take it to China. I don't know why. China is a nation sleeping with the enemy. We build them, they are our threat today. So what is the point building a nation when they are like sleeping with the enemy? I tell every political entity, why you have not thought about India as a destination? Why don't you take? I told the mayor, Eric Garcetti, very clearly. And he promised me, first thing he's going to do is take a trade delegation to India. Never did. Eight years. I asked Howard Berman as the Foreign Relations Committee Chairman, Howard, you want support from us, you want money from us, you want everything from us, but give me one answer. Have you heard the word called Chinapkis in the intelligence circles? He said, no. I said, Chinapkis stands for China, North Korea, Pakistan, Syria, Saudi Arabia, axis of evil. But all American politicians go there. Fortunately, after my conversation with him, he lost the election next time. So the issue that I'm trying to say, there are 196 nations plus to be built. And no politician takes interest in that. They get elected, they go to China. And they come back, get divorced also, by the way. So this is a true story of Jim Han, other people I know of. I hope Karen Bass takes now a trade delegation to India at least. So these are the things that I want to talk on camera, why it is important that this platform to grow is because everybody, every immigrant who lives in America and goes for the American dream enjoys the American dream. But they worry about what goes on in Paraguay, their people, their relations. Indo-Americans are worried about their village. In India, a lot of Indians contribute to the village back home. But nobody thinks that if you bring the businesses from that country to Los Angeles, like the Chinese do, you can take back money to that country under financial, technical, and global business development collaboration. These are the only three components that is required. The interest rates are very low in this country compared to other nations, most of the nations of the world. Come here with your approved DPR. DPR stands for Detailed Project Report. And the project should be shovel ready. Our job is to bring in the investment pool, marry the investors with the DPRs, make the deal successful, give a couple of, we are capable of funding a couple of trillion dollars at three to five percent or maybe two to four percent compared to India, seven to nine percent. So, so these are the reasons why we keep doing these conferences last 16 years. So please come on Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. Monday, December 12th is focused on Euro-Asia, European Union, North America and Asia. Second day is focused on Asia, primarily India more focused on and North America. Last day is going to be Latin America and India and United States. So this is the three-day compact conference that is going to happen. And then the next one is going to be in April 17, 18, and 19, the same location, same spot. And then we'll move to New York and in May. So these are the things that we keep doing. We do it for the country that people are passionate about. And they should believe in this platform. And which they do. Actually, to be honest, everybody believes in this platform. That's why they all come from far away places like Kazakhstan, Switzerland, all over the world. They come to this place from Poland. So the world has accepted this platform. And I really appreciate that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we would like to welcome you to U.S. Asia Global Business Forum. Uh, we have our uh, seminar on uh, 12th, 13th, and 14th. Uh, this is a technological seminar, financial seminar. Every day, different, different uh, events are going taking place. And uh, we have, in the last 16 years, we have funded almost uh, 
trillion dollar worth of fundings for projects and uh, you know we are working on our motto that uh, peace world peace through trade so please attend our seminar on 12th 13th and 14th thank you go hi my name is surrender multani uh, from usgbf i would like to invite everybody to come on board on December 12, 13, and 14. Uh, so you guys want to invite everybody? Uh, say something. Hello, everyone. My name is Avinda Chavla. I'm the chairman of US GBF, and uh, this is our 16th show that we are doing, and I would like everybody to attend this, and we would like to, in all of us, uh, we would like to invite you all. Please tell your friends and family to please join uh, so that we can... Uh, do good things for the world it's a it's a forum global peace through global trade we want prosperity for the whole world at the same time we want peace in the whole world thank you mr garson you want to say invite i'd like to invite everybody to come the 12th the 13th and 14th for the u.s global business forum which is promoting peace through trade there's abundance in this world for everybody. Let's make a difference. Yeah, this is Luis Casal from Latino America, an advisor and chairman, inviting you to attend this seminar that will be very useful for business of on, on the Monday, 12th of December, Tuesday, 13th of December, and Wednesday, 14th of December. Uh, will be very helpful and I invite you in Spanish right now. Por favor, atiendan a esta conferencia. Muy importante para todos los Latinos, ya que necesitamos investment in Latin America. We, we need to trade in and out. And through global uh, peace, we're going to attend. We're going to attain global trade around the world. Please come. Nurse Access Staffing is seeking experienced RN and LVNs. For more information, call us at 818-697-4484 or check us out on our website, nurseaccessstaffing.com.